Our third look at Amartya Sen covers his theory on democracy and famine. In world history, the major famines have come generally under non-democratic regimes. The Bengal famine of 1943 left 2 to 3 million people dead, and during this time India, of course, was ruled by Great Britain. Perhaps the largest and most tragic famine ever was the Great Leap Forward in China, and this came under the communist dictatorship of Chairman Mao. The famous Bangladesh famine of 1974 also came under a non-democratic regime. There are many more such examples. Sen had a simple and striking hypothesis, namely that, quote, no famine has taken place in the history of the world in a functioning democracy. It's easy to imagine why this might be. Politicians have an incentive to please voters in a democracy and get their votes, not to kill them or to make them hungry. Furthermore, if a famine is arising or about to arise, opposition parties can publicize the mistakes of the ruling regime, make this a campaign issue, and generate voter support in their favor. That, of course, induces the incumbent parties to do something about the potential famine. Finally, democracy is associated with freedom of the press. Media broadcasts can pick up early warning signs of starvation, make it a national issue, make it an international issue, make sure that if a famine comes, it is really understood who is to blame, and also to mobilize international aid and domestic food transfers to help avoid or limit the famine. For all of these reasons, democracy has a beneficial impact on food. Besley and Burgess have a famous paper on the political economy of government responsiveness, and they look at India, which has 16 major states. But across these states, there are different degrees of media competition, newspaper distribution, and also political competition. What Besley and Burgess find is that when there are lots of newspapers, media markets are very competitive, and there's a lot of political competition, there tend to be higher levels of public food distribution, and it's harder for people to go hungry. Hussain completely correct. What do his critics say? Well, they point to the Indian state of Bihar, which in the mid-1960s had tens of thousands of deaths. Another example given is Maharashtra, which in the 70s had 130,000 or so deaths. And both of these events, of course, came under democratic India. The debate then gets to, well, what really is a famine? How many people have to die before we call it a famine? It seems that Sen may have somewhat exaggerated his initial hypothesis, but still, it seems to be more correct than not. That is, having a democratic government really does significantly decrease the chances of famine in a country.